this is what the NA10 workflow looks like. And you can see that first we need the Google Sheets node. That's where I store the data. That's the content that I save in the Google Sheets from YouTube and website, for example. Once this data is parsed through NA10, it gets sent to the Pinecon vector store. And there is one index that we specify specifically in that node. And before getting sent to Pinecon, the content gets turned into an embedding via OpenAI. Although you can also use other embedding APIs available out there. In addition to that, the content is chunked through a recursive character text splitter that makes sure that we don't use too many tokens to send the data to the vector store. Otherwise, we would incur into an error message. So all these nodes here are native within NA10, which makes the process very easy to set up. The only thing that requires a bit more complexity is to create the proper connections and API keys on all these tools. So for example, here I've just pinned data to show an example of some Google Sheet rows that are being processed here. If I test this workflow, you can see that the items get passed one by one, turned into an embedding, split and sent to Pinecon. So even though we only processed three rows from the sheets, there were nine items created in Pinecon. And that's because the character text splitter splits the text that we sent to Pinecon into specific characters. And in my case, the chunk size is 1000 characters. So at every 1000 character, the text splitter cuts the text, creates a new bundle, and that bundle gets sent to Pinecon as a separate item. So this is what Pinecon looks like. I have an index called demo NA10 with just one namespace. If I browse through them here, I can see the ID or I can also list and fetch data. The ID of each item is automatically generated. Then there is the embedding, that's what was created by OpenAI. And there is some metadata, some of which is standard and automatically created by NA10 and some of which I added myself. The most important piece of metadata is the text key, because that's where the actual text of the content that's human readable is stored. Then I also added the title and the URL as metadata, because these are useful for me to get more context on that content. And the metadata is useful because in the future, you could filter by that metadata. For example, if you're looking to build a chat flow or a chat agent in Flowwise AI, you could use the Pinecone node to query for your embeddings, and you can add additional parameters and either query a specific namespace or query by filtering based on a metadata. So if you have different categories of content, for example, that's where you can use metadata or namespaces depending on your approach. So there, it is easier to query a specific category of content that you have as opposed to the entire index in Pinecon. Let's work through each component of this NA10 workflow for building a RAG chatbot, or at least to send data to Pinecon to then eventually build the chatbot or agent the workflow begins with the Google Sheets trigger that activates whenever a new row is added. This allows us to automatically process new content as it's added to our sheet. To connect with Google Sheets, you will need to create a Google Cloud Console project. You will need to enable the Google Drive API, set up OAuth 2.0 credentials for web application access. You will configure the redirect URL either for local instance or any cloud, depending on the service that you use. In my case, I did a local instance URL. And then you want to use the provided client ID and secret from the Google Cloud Console project to establish the connection in any Next up, there is the Pinecon Vector Store. 
To connect this node, you will need to create a Pinecone account if you don't already have one and generate an API key under the dedicated section. Then you want to set up a new index in Pinecone. In my case, I called it NA10 demo for this example use case. And you configure the operation mode for document insertion. And finally, connect to your chosen index in the NA10 node. Pinecone offers a generous free plan, so you will likely not need to upgrade, at least in the beginning, for sure, as you test the workflow and the data processing. The Pinecone Vector Store in NA10 requires two essential components. One is an embedding node. In my case, I used OpenAI and their embeddings API, but you can use any other API out there that offers embeddings. And the second essential component is a document node that processes the actual content that is sent from the Google Sheets in my case. For the OpenAI node, you want to create your account, your developer account on OpenAI if you don't have already created one, and get your API key and your organization ID and add them to any 10 in the connection panel. You will find relevant links and the guide directly on the connection panel in any 10 when you set up the OpenAI node or any other node really. So that is pretty straightforward. Then you want to select your preferred embedding model in the OpenAI embeddings API. In my case, I selected the embedding three small because that's also the model that I selected in my Pinecone index when setting it up. So you want to make sure that these two models match. And finally, the document node handles content processing and it has these settings. First, it uses a default data loader for JSON data. It processes content from Google Sheets rows. It includes the metadata. In my example, I included the URL, the title, and the ID as custom metadata that were not included by anything itself. And then it implements a text splitter with configurable settings. You can set the chunk size. It could be any number of characters as long as it doesn't exceed the token limit. In my case, I selected 1000 characters. We can also set the chunk overlap for context continuity. So how many characters should overlap among chunks? And this would be a bit of a trial and error also, depending on your use case, how much context you need versus precision in the answers. And you can format the text in multiple modalities. In my case, I selected Markdown, but you can also select other options here. And that's it. Once you configure each node, you're ready to go. And the workflow will automatically add new content to your Pinecone Vector Store index, making it available for retrieval through any chat floor or agent interface that you use. Some time ago, I created a video about how to build a chat flow in Flowwise AI. That example uses Superbase as a vector store, but the same concepts apply with Pinecone. It's actually easier to set up in Flowwise AI using Pinecone. And you can also use multiple namespaces to query a specific kind of content that you have in your vector store database. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Let me know your comments and questions down below and see you in the next one.